an adventure van here at the shop. You guys are going to really love this really huge van. Let's get started. Okay, I don't think I need to stand on this anymore. I'll go ahead and get down. But this is a 2010 E-Series van that's been converted to 4x4 and made into an adventure van by Advanced 4x4 in Salt Lake City, Utah. You can see, and they, they did a very good job. It's, it's very, very well done. But because of all the alterations and how massive this thing is, this poor customer has been to eight or ten different shops and all they keep hearing is no, 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 no. We will not work on your van. Get it out of my shop. It's, re it's just a Ford van. It does have some alterations to make it a 4x4 but they're very simple alterations and we'll look at those here in a minute but there's nothing really odd about this thing. It's simple. It came in for some leaks. It came in from exhaust leaks making a noise. We'll take a look at that as well. But that's it. It's really not that complicated. The work that needs to be done to this is very simple. Why turn it down? I don't get it. I can understand a little bit because it is going to be annoying a little bit to work on this because of its height and we'll talk about that here in a minute and show you. It's kind of kind of funny really. But there was a few shops that they called on the phone. They didn't even see the van yet. And they, they said it does have the 4x4 conversion from Salt Lake City, Utah. And that was all they got out as far as getting words out of their mouth. And they're just like, nope, nope, we're not working on that. So I got an email from this customer kind of pleading. It's like, I'm at my wit's end. I just need these simple things fixed. I can't even get it into the shop. They're like putting up brick walls. They're like, go away. No, stay away. They're acting as if it's some Ferrari or something and they just can't work on it. I said, yes, we would be happy to work on your adventure van. I really like your adventure van. I think it's cool. We will be happy to take care of it for you. So let's take a look around this thing and then we'll dive into what we're going to have to fix. It does have a big, beefy front bumper on this thing. It is meant for serious business and it has a giant bumper jack on top in case you get stuck in the mud or have a breakdown or something like that. This thing is serious. This is locked here, but I think there's probably a winch under there. You can see it's from Oklahoma. Heavy, heavy duty. I do like the series of vans in the 2010 year range that has these stacked headlights, kind of like the super duty trucks. They look really, really cool. The van really is in very good shape. It has not been abused, it's not been beat up or scratched or run off a cliff or anything. That's one of the reasons why I took on this job. As we go down the side here, you can see the wheels are not scuffed up. The fender flares are in good shape. The body is in very good shape. It's not rusted out. It's not packed with mud. There's not sticks and twigs sticking out of the suspension. And you can see up top here it says it's sportsmobile.com. Maybe that has more to do with the top that's on, it, on the top there. As we get to the back it has another steel bumper and a big storage box on the back and a full size spare. Very, very heavy duty. Same thing on this side. It is not beat up or scratched or rusted. The wheels are not gouged. Everything along this side is in very good shape. So the body looks good. There is one downfall to this truck or van or whatever you want to call it. And it has the dreaded 5.4 three valve Triton. That's the only sad thing about it. But luckily this one is running like a champ. Let's go ahead and have Mrs. Wizard walk up the stairs and take a look under the hood. You can see deep down in there is a 5.4 Triton. This would not be fun to do an engine swap on with a new motor if we had to. It would be very, very labor intensive. As you can see, it's not a very large hole to get the engine out. It would be kind of tough. May even have to come out the bottom. I don't work on a lot of vans as far as engine swaps and things, so that would be definitely a challenge compared to a normal Ford truck. Luckily, this one's doing fine. 
We don't have to pull the motor. The very fact that Mrs. Wizard is on a stepping stool just to look at the engine is enough to make some shops say, hell no, I'm not working on your vehicle because I'm not going to stand on a stepping stool all day long. It's really not that big of a deal. So not much going on under the hood here, at least as far as on the top of the engine. But there it is. It's hard to get to, but it is unfortunately a 5.4 Ford 3 valve. I'll let Mrs. Wizard hop into the interior and give you guys a tour. It's really big in there. Okay, ladies and gents, we're going to have a, well, it's a short tour for a very big vehicle. And here's our gauge cluster. We can see it has 123,000 miles on it. So it does have a fair amount of miles on the engine, even though this is one of Wizard's least favorite engines. As we move up, it does have a nice, decent sized dash. And of course it will because it is a full size van and has to accommodate half the engine in our cabin space. But again, a lot of big space there to put, you know, pens, phones, whatnot. Looks like we have a couple of spots. One of my favorite accessories is you can just pop your phone on one of two magnetic spots. Great way to keep the phone out of our hands. Hopefully we're not looking at while we're driving. We can definitely see an addition added here with different lightings that can be controlled by the driver. Again, a very big space for our HVAC system. And it looks like it does have an addition of a Kenwood radio. Another addition I'm seeing also is we have a USB port here and an extension port over there. So I'm not sure what exactly they're plugging in. And there's also another one right over there. So they've got a lot of USB items that they're needing to, well, keep charged, plugged in or accessible. We do have a very large cup holder, I don't know, center console area, since the center console in a van is, you know, open. But behind all of that would be our engine. So you can definitely see why it would definitely be a problem if things need to be worked on. Much of this, just like in Wizard's last video, has to get taken out to access much of that engine area. We can see that they have added our four-wheel drive selection down there on the floor. It is an automatic, but it does have this for our four-wheel drive capabilities. As we look at our door, it does have lots of dove gray plastic. It does have a nice herringbone pattern for our speaker covers. Behind the windshield cover there, we can see that there are some dove gray leather seats with a very nice large armrest. So it does make this for a very smooth ride, at least for the driver and the passenger. But as we move back, as I said, it was gonna be short. There's nothing back there. We have a lovely rug on the floor, but beyond that, uh, not a whole lot going on back there. We can see that the roof does go up and would make for a very interesting space up above, but that's part of the customer's setup and not what we are talking about today. We're gonna to be looking underneath in just a second, but they do have a couple of blankets back there. I guess maybe if you want a nice picnic. Back at the steering wheel, pretty basic just a Ford steering wheel. So other than the back seat being absolutely removed, not sure what they would do back there and what adventures would happen, but that is what we've got. So let's get this up in the air. It's a short trip, so uh, be prepared. So here we have a large off-road tire and the customer complained of a vague steering wheel that felt kind of loose and a couple of shops that would at least look at it said, there's nothing wrong, we can't find anything. We don't know why it has a vague steering wheel. It wasn't very hard to find out why. It has nothing to do with the steering gearbox, the steering shaft, the steering wheel, the alignment. It has nothing to do with any of that. I drove this thing down the road and put my head out the window like a hound dog does sometimes with the wind blowing. And I was watching this wheel while it was spinning and I would turn the wheel ever so slightly and I found why it has steering delay. The sidewalls are so tall on these tires and it's such a soft tire that when you turn the wheel, you can actually see the metal part of the wheel start to turn and there's a split second delay for the tire itself to even catch up to the wheel. Kind of like this. That's just because it has very tall off-road tires. Anybody that has a jacked up Jeep or a K5 Blazer knows with the big tires comes not as precise steering. It's just the way it is. This is not made for precise steering. It's made for off-roading. So that problem is solved. It's been figured out why. And the customer was totally happy with the answer. The next thing is an exhaust leak. I'll raise this thing up a little bit and we're going to look through the wheel wells.
The second complaint was an exhaust noise when the engine was cold. It sounded like a ticking, like tick, 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 tick. They would like that looked at, and we found out the problem, which is common on Dodge, Chevy, and Ford in the post-2000 world, is using very small studs or bolts to hold the exhaust manifolds on. Any corrosion that gets on them, they just snap, and then the exhaust gaskets start leaking. Let's take a look. So you can see here they have small little studs holding on this big beefy exhaust manifold and you can actually see this one snapped in half. It's broken. So the exhaust is ticking on this side. It's the same on the other side as well. And one by one slowly these will start snapping. Snap, snap, snap and it'll just get worse and worse and worse. Both exhaust manifolds are going to have to come off to address this issue. And guess what? more bolts are promised, guaranteed, to snap in half. They will break. That's part of the job. I was upfront with the customer and said, I will work on this for you, but you need to know every single one that breaks and we have to drill it out is another half hour added to the bill. So every time it snaps, we will try to use my induction tool to get those off, but the truth is we don't want to use those studs over again. We want all of them to come out. I have a kit with all new studs, all new nuts. So they're probably going to break. Not all of them, probably 10, 20% of them. So it won't be that bad, but we're gonna pull those off and take care of the customer. So we'll get 10 new studs on this side, 10 new studs on the other side, all new gaskets, and that will solve the problem. We do this just like the evaporator core, heater core issue we saw on the red truck on one of the last videos that we did just recently. We're not just going to fix the broken one and leave you with the rest old rusty old bolts and hopefully they'll hold. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to do all of them so they can leave here and not worry about the studs for years. The last issue is there's two leaks on the bottom of this vehicle and they'd like to know what are the leaks. So I'll go ahead and raise this up as high as I can go and then we're going to scoot underneath. Ready guys, here we go. This is a very heavy vehicle. I'm also very thankful for Ben Pack giving me these 10,000 pound lifts because this wouldn't be possible on a 6,000 pound lift. This thing is very heavy. This right here is another reason why the other shop said, hell no, we ain't working on that. Because you can't walk under it. Everything is harder and harder to fix on this. It all pays the same, I don't care. Me and Mrs. Wizard are going to use stools. We're gonna sit on stools and scoot around underneath. Are you ready, Mrs. Wizard? Uh, sure. Here's yours. Thank you, kind sir. All right, I'll scoot over to you guys. We'll look up here and see our radiator is nice and dry. All the hoses are nice and dry. It looks very nice under here. You can see that these additions here to allow these leaf springs on this axle. This didn't come on an E-Series van. This is all aftermarket pieces and parts. Here's our big brakes, big axles. Everything looks good there. Nothing loose. Our shock is good. You can see these exhaust manifolds are drenched in oil and they're that way on purpose because we've soaked all the nuts on both manifolds to let them soak overnight so that we can take these apart and hopefully not break any of them. They've come out pretty easy. Our oil pan's nice and dry. It looks brand new. Here's our oil filter with the oil cooler. Everything looks good there. We'll check out this wheel here. Brakes look good. Nothing leaking there. Our steering stabilizer is nice and dry. Nothing loose and the shock is nice and dry. This front axle here is something you don't find on an E-Series van as well. I imagine it's probably off of an F-Series, but that makes this a 4x4 adventure van. You can see this was added here and welded on this bracket so they can add this track arm here and keep the axle stable. Move on back to the transmission. It's nice and dry. Everything looks good there. And then we look at our... Where's our transfer case? It's gone. 
Now I know it's gone guys. It was leaking right here. This is a two wheel drive transmission and it was leaking on this flange here. Normally there would be an output cone right here and the drive shaft and everything like that. But this has been altered to be a four wheel drive. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But it was leaking here at this adapter. Our U-joints are good. That's That right there, guys, is what a double carbon joint is. You see how strangely it moves. These frequently do not get greased. They will before it leaves here. There's our exhaust. Here's our big fuel tank. Here's the other drive shaft being held up here. We'll move on back to here. U-joints, good there. Big exhaust muffler. The shock is nice and dry. This shock is nice and dry. We do have disc brakes in the back. They are good. No leaks, nothing leaking back here. Same thing over here, brakes are good. No leaks, nothing going on there. Here's our next leak on this Yukon differential cover. It is just the threads on this drain plug. You can see it's already building up a drip right there. We can reseal that with Teflon tape, put it back on, and make sure it's full of gear oil, and that will take care of both of their leaks. There's our charcoal canister. Obviously, there's no spare tire here because it's mounted to the back of the vehicle. You can see a wire disconnected there. The rear parking sensor has been disabled to fit this big bumper. The customer was curious if we could program it to where delete that out of the system and we were like no you'll have to go to a dealer to have that removed. We do not have that capability here so that'll be something i will have to go elsewhere but we're definitely able to help on the rest. Let's head on over to the transfer case. So here's our transfer case out of this vehicle. It was actually pretty easy to take out. You can see here that it does have an adapter spline shaft so that it can reach the output shaft of the transmission. Normally the transfer case would bolt right to the transmission or maybe a small adapter plate, but in order to make all this work with the transmission that's in here, these people at Advanced 4x4 made up this large adapter tube here. This one side bolts to the transmission and the transfer case is on this side. And in between it mounts with this spline shaft I just showed you. But instead of having a gasket here, for whatever reason, I don't know, they just had black silicone. It was leaking here where the black silicone had given way and started leaking at the flange here. There's actually paper gaskets that's made for these. I ordered two of them. We're going to be going back together with a paper gasket and a small amount of silicone. And put this back together and that will take care of the leak. There's nothing wrong here. There's nothing broken. They just want the leak fixed. It's a nice fan. They don't like it dripping on the driveway. Unfortunately, you have to take all this apart just to replace a paper gasket, but what do you do? It's, we got to do it, get it fixed for them. So we'll take care of the leaking exhaust manifolds. We took care of their vague steering feel, or at least found out what it was. We'll take care of this leak as well. The only thing we can't do here is go into the main computer and turn off the parking sensors completely. That'll be, have to be done with a Ford IDS or something like that. So we don't have IDS here because we don't work on thousands of Fords every year. So I'm very happy we can take care of these issues for this customer, get them back on the road, enjoying their really sweet adventure van. This was not a hard job. Nothing that we're doing here or have done is hard. We were able to overcome the fact that we can't raise this all the way up by using stools like me and Mrs. Wizard did. We have this blue table, it's a hydraulic table I can pump it up and it's able to lift like 3,000 pounds so we were able to put the transfer case on the table and just let it down it really wasn't that hard at all to do we have the little staircase here or I guess the stepping stool as you can call it if we need to look inside the engine bay it's really not that hard I don't understand why not only once but ten times they heard no 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 we're not working on your van it's just this isn't hard it really is basic mechanics. It's a matter of preference. I don't feel like working on your van. I can. I just don't want your van in my shop. And that's too bad. That's really sad. Obviously, we're not having parts issues here with the old cars. These parts are everywhere. 
So yes, we were happy to fix this for this customer. So if you're curious what kind of tools that Magic Mike used to work on this really sweet adventure van, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. It's way, way down there. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because there is really cool cars yet to come. Really cool videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.